Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about Sentry.io. So in this video, we're going to learn how to monitor a React application with Sentry. And what's nice about Sentry is that their SDKs are fully open source. Um, however, uh, they also have a paid service, uh, which is actually the like dashboard you can use to track your errors and stuff like that. Um, but they have a very generous plan and you can sign up for free and uh, and and already get a lot of value out of it for free. So um, that's exactly what we're going to set up in this video and, and, and try to use. Now, uh, Sentry started out first as a company focused on tracking errors in your application, but uh, um, throughout time, they also added features where you can measure the performance of your application, which is also really nice. So let's, uh, let's start setting up Sentry. So, First of all, um, I'd like you to go to Sentry.io. And as you can see, I'm already signed in because I already created an account. <clears throat> but you can just uh, just sign up for an account as well. And then we want to create a new project. Okay. And right here, I will select React. A Sentry can give you alerts when, when things go wrong. Uh, and you can get like, you know, really fancy with it. There's a lot of conditions you can set about when to be alerted or not. Um, for this video, I think it just as a general guideline, I think it's good if you say like, let's say if there more are, there are more like 10 occurrences of a unique error in, let's say one week, something like that, okay? So then I can actually create the project and now the project is created and you will see that we automatically get um, some uh, a guide to to uh, configure react so let's actually do that so first of all we need to install uh, Sentry react and Sentry tracing so i'll just copy this line and i will install the packages and get back to you once it's done all right awesome so the libraries are installed and now we can actually continue um, and i will start by copying this and putting it in my index.js file. And I will also copy snippet right here. Like so, okay. So as you can see right here, we have a property called traces sample rate. Uh, you can set that value between zero and one. Um, and this is focused on uh, capturing the performance, okay? So if you set it to zero, that will mean that no traces are being sent to Sentry, so you will have like no performance monitoring at all. If you set it to one, that means that all traces are being sent to Sentry. But like I said before, uh, Sentry also charges you, or if you have a free plan, then your, uh, your free credits will be deducted, right? You will kind of like pay for the amount of traces you're using. And uh, that's why it's, you know, generally speaking, recommended to, um, you know, set this value lower in production. So not to 1.0, but probably to, you know, 0 0.2, something like that. Um, something that also would make a lot of sense that if you would, uh, you, you probably only want to measure performance in production. So what you can do then, you can say process.env dot node env. And then we can say if that is equal to production, right? So when the React application is in production mode, and that will automatically be triggered when your um, when you have like a production build of your React app, then only it will um, run Sentry, okay? But for now, we'll actually comment it out because uh, I also want to have it working in in uh, development mode, right? So I will save this. And now the last thing we need to do is go to the complete React docs. And right here on the performance monitoring, when you click on setup and scroll down, uh, you see what we have to do in our app.jsx component. So I will import Sentry there as well. And export the app component uh, using the Sentry profiler and I will actually then remove export default from here. So this is working. There we go. So now when I save it, uh, we've got Sentry uh, running and we can verify this by 
go into the network tab and now you will see that you click right here uh we made a successful request to sentry now if this error or if this actually doesn't work if you get an error then i recommend you to check maybe your uh, your ad blocker because that could uh, stop actually from sending requests to Sentry. I had that problem myself with uh, with uBlock, so uh, you might want to disable your ad blocker. Uh, but having that said, now uh, it's pretty much set up. So what I will do is uh, let's actually throw an error in our React app and and see if it's uh, being caught by by Sentry. So instead of saying Sentry, I will put a button here. And I will say that, by the way, the button has a type of button. And on click, I want to throw an error that says, oops, something has gone wrong. Okay. So I will save it. And I will say, do not click on this button. Okay, so now what you will see is I will just refresh the app. Uh, once I click on the button, we get an error in our React app. But when I scroll up a little bit, you will see that the error is also sent to Sentry. Okay, and we can verify this by going to Sentry.io. And that should now push me to the dashboard. And now can I... I can click on projects and right here you will see that we had two transactions uh, and when you click right here on view all issues and I'll actually make the screen a little bigger like so so now I can click on view all issues and you will see uh, the error right so with the text we um, or with the error message we gave it and you will see it occurred uh, twice and there was one user affected by this. And what's nice about Sentry is that it gives you some extra confidence when shipping your code to your customer, right? So uh, like I said before, in the, in the testing series of this course, you can test your app, but you're never 100% sure that um, it's actually working, right? That, that all your code is working and, and your users are not experiencing any errors. So, with this, uh, you know, you will be notified if things go wrong in your app, which is, well, super valuable, I think. Uh, and uh, you get a lot of information about the error. So you will see, you know, what kind of, what device it happened, um, the IP address of the user. Uh, it gives you a stack trace of the error, right? So it gives you some information uh, regarding uh, uh, what has gone wrong. Right here, you see that the in, under the breadcrumb section, you see that it happened on a click event, and you see that within the body, it went to div root, right? This is our React app, and then uh, it happened when the user clicked on button with a type button, um, which makes sense because that's actually what we did. So that's that's very valuable information. And what's also nice is that, like I said before, we also can monitor the performance uh, using Sentry. And that's actually using the Web Vitals I talked about before in the performance series. So if you see right here in the index.js file, uh, the report Web Vitals um, function is run. And that's actually coming from this file, report Web Vitals.js. And Sentry is actually using this to uh, to get the uh, to get the information, and well, as you can see right here, you can see what the first contentful paint was, the largest contentful paint, the first input delay, and that's also uh, extremely interesting. If you'd like to know more about what this actually means, you can hover over this or even Google it, uh, because there's like you know multiple metrics to track like uh, how. Well, you could say fast your app is or how good it performs for your users. Um, so, but what you also will see, let's say I run this app again and I will, let's say, throttle both the network and my CPU, 
Okay, so I just selected low end mobile right here. And now I will just reload this page. That of course will be very slow. There we go, it loaded. I just put it back to no throttling. So now when I refresh Santry, might take a while before the data actually is, is also processed by Santry. So I'll just wait and refresh again. There we go. So now you see that we had, uh, this is actually the average Confo paint. And now you see it's almost increased by five seconds, right? Uh, and it seems that that is also, you know, poor performance. So do note that the um, performance of your application is also affected by the devices your users are using. But yeah, just do know, like, especially if you select the low end mobile in, in, in Chrome, it will just slow down your CPU, like, so incredibly much that your React app will always be very slow. There's very little you can do about it. But this is also nice, you know, if you click right here, you can also see how it performed over time. So it gives you an idea of how your app performs. So that's pretty much it about Sentry. And by the way, I want to show you one more thing. Uh, let's say you, you know, most of the time someone in your team is going to be um, uh, be in the lead for, for monitoring Sentry or, or maybe even uh, more folks are, are doing it. So let's say you're being assigned to fix a certain issue. Then you can just go to the uh, to the project, right? And then you can go to the issues. And now let's say that you have changed the code and you fixed the bug. Then you can actually resolve the issue, okay? And um, that's uh, that's a way for uh, for you to let other people know that you solved the uh, the issue. So, but there's a lot more you can do with Sentry. I definitely recommend you to you know just discover and then and play a little bit around with Sentry, see what you can uh, can do. Uh, but there's so much you can do. It's uh, it's really nice uh, to have. So, but yeah, having that said, that was it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.